And now I'd like to introduce, please help me welcome to your screen and mine, Paul Frankel. Put your hands together. There he is. Hey. Hello. Hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah, good. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you for Thank coming. You. Thank you for showing the film. Absolutely. Um, as we're t I'm going to ask you a few questions, um, but as we're talking, as always, guys, if you have any comments or, or questions, chuck them in the comments. Uh, right. First of all, we were curious um, as to how this idea came about. Is this from a personal place? Um, so, my, kind of, yeah. My um, a cousin of mine uh, went to Jewish uh, sixth form and became kind of ultra-Orthodox while there. Mm -hmm. And she had an arranged marriage, which... Um, kind of, well, eventually didn't work out, but she came from a less um, orthodox background and then decided to become kind of ultra-orthodox. Mm -hmm. And I know some other people as well from the Jewish community that have been, like, really liberal growing up or really uh, non-religious at all, and then they get to kind of 18, 20, 22, and suddenly become really, decide they're going to be really religious and, and jump into, um, yeah, orthodoxy and kind of take on all these kind of quite strict traditions. Obviously I, flipping the normal stereotype. Yeah, um, yeah I, I just thought it was, that was interesting and I wanted to kind of look at why someone might make that choice and what might cause them to make it without presenting it in any judgments, with, with any judgments mm -hmm. or any judgments away because I think it's quite easy as like a, you know, kind of liberal London cosmopolitan audience to be like, oh, well, anyone who's orthodox is, you know, have, well, make judgments about that. Yeah, and I wanted to, um, yeah, just show, like, explore why someone make that choice without, without kind of saying whether it was right or wrong. See, and I think, I think this really works because I think there's a. My feeling was, uh, and why I love the script again, keeping with the theme, the script is so effective, um, is because we are, in my view, we're following this uh, young woman. We think we know her mm. more than we do. And, and I think part of us, when we get to the end and you have that wonderful misdirection at the end, I think there's, we're going, there's no way we would have guessed that she would have gone down that route, but it, fine. If that's a thing that happens, if they have arranged marriages in Judaism and all that, then perhaps that is, because I'm, I'm Jewish as well, but I didn't really, okay. that's, that's a side of, of um, the faith that, you know, I, we, we don't know, we don't, under, a lot of us, the lay person yeah, doesn't yeah. really understand how deep it goes. And you do, you did a great job of drawing that out, I think. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm also, so my parents are both very um, liberal and I, yeah, there's a lot I don't know about orthodoxy, even though, yeah, as you say, like I'm Jewish, but there's a lot I don't know. Um, I had to kind of do quite a lot. I had to, actually the rabbi character, who's quite, quite, quite a small role, but he is from the Hasidic community and I kind of wanted to get him involved so just so that I could like also use him as a bit of a like reference sa sounding board yeah to be like, yeah it's authentic what do you think is would this really happen um uh, and for, for example he said that it is very possible that like a an older guy who hasn't been married for like slightly older in his like early 30s or whatever who hasn't been married may marry a younger woman who is pregnant um if she's like completely willing to kind of do the and get married and yeah. live the right life, even if it's not his child, which I think actually was quite surprising because I normally think of there being such strict rules between like men and women in orthodoxy and it being something that you, you know, so well, stuff like that was, was good to. A lot of times, I think, um, from people that I've spoken to, that arranged marriage situations are all part of trying to create an, an, the, a hardcore integrity to a family unit. They sort of go, okay, well, it makes sense if you guys hook up. Because he's got a good job, and you need, you know, does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, and like because the, the yeah the family unit is such that like the core of of the community, yeah. and the, the, like the, of you know each unit of the community that I guess it's about finding a match for that works that functions within the larger community, and that oh yeah, yeah, but uh, more more on theme. <laughs> Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry, this is a very interesting conversation for another time. Um, what I'm curious is how much of this sort of mysteriousness that you act that you that you showed, how much of it was on the page and how much was in the edit? Uh, it was all on the page. 
um, I always wanted it to to set up that she was going to have an abortion, and that I wrote the dialogue so that you, it could be taken to lead to try and lead the audience to think that she's going to have an abortion, and then, oh, but it works both ways. So that yeah, it's not giving away what's happening, but it's also could you know not misdirecting. Yeah, but it's it's not just this; it's also the the f- tone of the film. And watching yeah. Rosie Francona, shout out to Rosie Francona, who's a big Woo! friend of the night. Shout out Rosie, who does Great a fantastic job in this. Great performance. So actually, Arafili, I'm going to welcome Arafili back up here because she wants to talk to you about how you work with actors. Because okay. uh, we showed your film Roxanne before at our LGBTQ plus uh, night, which uh, we missed you at that one. I know, I'm sorry. No, I'm <laughs> um, yeah, hit it. Get Before I go to that, we have two questions from the audience. Oh. And the one is, why did you choose this uh, aspect ratio, r- ratio? Mm-hmm. 4 to 3? What's the reason for that? Um, I guess because, firstly, I like it. Um, secondly, I think, there's because it was quite, I wanted to kind of, with the visuals, to emphasize the idea of tradition and... Um, it was kind of a feeling that it evokes. I don't know why it feels more traditional. And also, it's, I think it's a really nice framing format for one a character story about one person. I think it frames one person really nicely. And it's so, like, just about her and her story and her world and her journey that I didn't really want to focus too much on kind of... The background. or The background and what was going mm-hmm. on in the surroundings. It's all about, like, her. And it frames one person's face really nicely, I think. Um, yeah, and- it, the whole film has this sense, like I've said before, of... of- following somebody their journey like it really does feel yeah. about her it's not like the atmosphere is in the school is a character you know they always say that with films like this is really just her you're in her head which is why it may, i think it, it's so much more effective at the end when you it flips everything yeah. sorry go ahead and the other uh, we have a more philosophical question from greece from dimitris uh, who asks how, how free is to deep into deep tradition so what is freedom? Is it freedom to follow um, your far, your family's paradigm, or what is freedom in this in this case? I give you the same. I guess. Um, well, for Joe, she sees it as she sees the kind of hedonistic lifestyle um, as oppressive, and she sees. All oh, right. Um, her mum's lifestyle, she was oppressive. She kind of, she, she, because, you know, she remembers her grandmother with the photograph. She kind of, um, and I guess she's got fond memories of her grandmother and the traditions and the structure around the life that she had and took comfort in it. And I guess, um, so for her, freedom would be, you know, orthodoxy. And whether or not that's the right, right. one, the wrong one, I'm not, I didn't want to, yeah, I didn't want to say, but that's what she decided in that moment where she felt like, the kind of she didn't fit into the world she was supposed to mm. that's very interesting that's a, yeah that's a very interesting question mm. so the freedom of being lost in traditions in old tradition or the feeling like you need freedom from all those old traditions yeah mm. what is freedom for everybody my mind is blown <laughs> <laughs> very nice so, any other yeah. questions from no no you're no, off? okay yeah. uh yeah, anyway, we want to talk to you about uh, actors. Sorry, just very quickly. Oh, yeah. You're working with actors. So mm-hmm. you had incredible performances in the other film, Roxanne, as well as in this film, are very striking. And there's actually, now that we're talking about it, there's a lot of work for the actors to do in keeping this um, moral ambiguity and all this kind of stuff. So talk to us a bit about that. Yeah, so um, there was quite a lot of like rehearsal and prep with this film. I think, I feel like... It, it was quite, we did a lot of, um, like, games, uh, improv games, getting people to kind of, uh, so, for example, we did, uh, I improvised the scene in the car with um, Rosie and with Graham, who plays Mr. Adler, Mm -hmm. pretending that the mum was sat in the back seat. Oh, interesting. Um, So they had to kind of, to make Rosie, Rosie aware of, the fact that she was trying to escape from her mum and to make Graham aware of the fact that Mr. Ad, that Mr. Adler's doing something that he probably feels a bit guilty about and that, like, the mum's... Like, he's aware that his fam- her family don't know what's going on. Mm. Um, 
I did some improv where uh, James, who was playing Mark, the guy she kisses at the party, kind of has to guide uh, Rosie as if she's on a tightrope, with her, Rosie with her eyes closed, to kind of build the sense that he, she's being led by him and that she has to, she's the one who doesn't know. Because Rosie was, a, was older and a lot more experienced than James, who was, I think, 18 and hadn't been in the film before and just finished. He actually went to the school that we shot at. Um, so just to try and kind of reverse the, the roles a bit, we did that. Um, i trying to think what else. We, like, so a lot of exercises to develop yeah. richness in the dynamic between people. Yeah. Uh, and this is something that you do on all your films? or? I guess it depends. Yeah, because I, I, the, the most recent one I've just done, I didn't need it so much because I think the character re the actor really understood the character like she kind of was the character already right so there wasn't there wasn't much to do but it, I guess it depends on the situation like this one was so compl complex and there were so many like I don't know I feel like there were a lot of layers going on yeah that needed to be kind of played through mm -hmm. um, and like, even with the mum like is she is she being supportive is she being unsupportive like we played it both ways with Casey as well she, you know, because she we kind of try, we tried to get her in the headspace that she, her her mum, you know, she had this quite traumatic upbringing with her mum, who was really religious and had all these expectations on her, and that she doesn't see that she's doing anything wrong, mm. but then also she's like maybe wheedling, trying to get into Joe's to fight, like trying to like coerce Joe into telling her what's going on. Um, so if I'm rambling a bit, but no, that's all right, man. Just, yeah, playing with dynamics. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it creates this, you, you create a real, a lot of richness and a lot of, a real volume of story for such a short piece. I will say to you, you are a very sensitive, very mis mysterious artist. Uh, your you. films are, are fantastic, man. Thank you so much for Thank coming so on. Much. Thank you so much for having me. No worries. Keep it up. Oh, I didn't put your, shit, I haven't put your, there. That's, uh, I don't know if you're white. Yeah, that's got his um, Twitter handle on there, Paul underscore A underscore Frankel, if anyone wants to stalk you. Fair? Yeah. yeah. Sure. Thank you so much for coming. Big round of applause for Paul. We will see you again. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> okay. Yeah.